Okay, so we are now on item number 19, no? Uh, this is part 2 of our final coaching. So let us start. Uh, 19. When the court has jurisdiction over the person, the accused, he shall be set on blank. So the court no, acquired jurisdiction over the person of the accused. What do you mean by this? You see, the, the accused was arrested by virtue of warrant, or the accused was already in custody no, because he was arrested after committing a crime. So the court now has jurisdiction over the accused. And what will the court do? He shall uh, be set on is it trial, B, arraignment, C, pretrial, G, D, adjudication. Well, of course, it would be arraignment. No? The first step of trial is arraignment. Yeah. Arraignment, pretrial, and trial. So, the moment the, the, the court acquired jurisdiction over the person accused, then within 30 days, no? within 30 days, kailangan maset na yung arraignment. Randy, what is preter intentionem? No? Preter intentionem. Jet A, the law may be harsh, but it is the law. B, mistake, mistake in identity. C, injurious assault is greater than intended, or the lack of inten intention to commit so grave a wrong. D, misappropriation of fact which would have been true had the facts been as accused belief been true. So, of course, preterna tensione means yung letter C. Injurious result is greater than that intended or the lack of tension to meet sugary or wrong. So, yung preterna tensione kasi parang nini, uh, yung intention mo just cause injury but namatay yung, yung ano, result, no? namatay yung biktima. So, slapping in the face, no? yung isang husband, uh, sinampal yung wife, uh, unfortunately, yung wife na tumba, nabagok yung ulo na magtay. So, that's preterminasyonin. Ganyan din yan sa, ano, sa, example, sa PNPA or PMA. Okay? Gusto nung upper class, di disiplinahin yung lower class. Sinuntok. Eh, natumba. Nabagok yung ulo, patay. So, that's preterminasyonin. Okay? Injurious result is greater than that intended. Or the lack of intention to commit security para. So, ito naman, the law may be harsh, but it is the law. That is Joralex and Lex. Mistake in identity, this is error in persona. Error in persona. And yung isa naman, misappropriation of fact which have been true had the facts been as accused believes them to be, this is mistake of fact. Okay, this is mistake of fact. Okay, 21. Evidence related to the issue by reason of common sense and logic. So, ano yan? Evidence related. Okay, yan yung keywords natin eh. To the, the issue, no? okay. we're using our common sense or logic. Is it A, relevant evidence? B, material evidence? C, competent evidence? D, none of the above. So, of course, this is relevant evidence. Kasi related, no? Relevant, related. Okay, related. Okay, the, what is test of relevancy? You know? The evidence is whether or not uh, presented as such is in relation to the fact in issue to induce a belief in its existence or non-existence. Okay? So, in the relevance then is determinable by the rules of logic and human experience. So, ang relevancy ay nakabase sa rules of logic and human experience. Again, so of course, of course um, if yung kaso ay drugs, anong possession of illegal drugs? Anong mga relevant evidence doon? Well, of course, yung uh, drugs itself, no? yung mark nga ni, yung paraparalya kung nandun. Okay? Uh, pwede yung cellphone kung nandun yung transaction. Okay? But, yung, kon yung condo na may semen, is it relevant to the drug possession? Yung kaso drug possession, tapos yung semen na nasa condom, is it relevant? No? May logic ba? May relationship ba? May connection ba? Wala naman. Okay? Wala naman. So, that's na. That is, um, not relevant or irrelevant. Now, 22. General rule states that complaint of pressure must charge but one offense. Okay? Kailangan kasi yung general rule, yung complaint, o di kaya yung information, kailangan mag-charge lang ng isang offense. 
Kaya sabi ko sa inyo before, if apat yung kaso, apat na information din yung gagawin nyo. Okay? Except, kailan pwedeng sabayin yan? Kailan marami, pwedeng marami yung kaso sa isang public information? Is it A, if the offense is separate? B, if the offense committed is a complex crime? B, if the offense was committed by a bond or none of the above? So, ang tamang sagot ay, of course, yung complex crime. Kasi pag complex crime rin, yan, no? if it's complex crime, there's only one penalty. So, even if there are two crimes there present, the the the, the law states that except if the law prescribes a single penalty. Uh, the law prescribes a single penalty. So, uh, yeah, complex crime, the law prescribes a single penalty yan. So, uh, yan yung exception. So, nakalagay na, no? Anong rule sa duplicity of offense? A complaint or information must charge but one offense. That's the general rule, one offense. Pero may exception na yan. Anong exception? When the law prescribes a single punishment for various offenses. Okay? When the law prescribes single punishment for various offenses like in compound crime, complex crime, and special complex crime. Kasi ito, tinan nyo. Oh, yan. Ito yung example ko dati sa mga previous video. Juan de la Cruz. Uh, people Philippines versus Juan de la Cruz. Four, selling shabu under section 59165. Possession of shabu, section 119165. Possession of firearms, section 28, Possession of exclusive, section 19516. Isa lang yung information, apat yung kaso. Is that allowed under the law or under the rules? Actually, no. Kung apat yung kaso, apat yung information na nang i-prepare mo, hindi pwede yung pag ilamsam mo sa isang kaso yung ah, sa isang information yung apat na kaso o yung apat na crime pero may exception tayo ano yung exception din na when the law prescribes single punishment for various offenses okay ano yung example niyan yan rape with homicide rape with homicide is special complex crime is a special complex crime so isa lang yung kaso diyan although dalawa yung act ni rape niya at saka pinatay but under the law isa lang yung penalty diyan kaya isang information lang gagawin mo Okay? Rape with homicide. Ano pa? Okay. So, yan yung example. Let's go to 23. Which the following is not secondary evidence. Okay? Ang tanong dyan, not okay, secondary evidence. Hindi secondary evidence. Okay? A. Copy of the original document. B. Recital of contents of document in some authentic document. C. Document notarized may notary public. D. Testimony of witnesses. So, ang tanong nga, hindi secondary evidence. Hindi secondary evidence. So, alin dyan hindi secondary evidence? Well, of course, yung document notarized by notary public. Because document notarized by notary public, this is a uh, public document. And it, it, it should not be authenticated. No? We'll discuss it later. So, ang sabi ko nga before, di ba, ito. Ano yung mga secondary evidence? Uh, evidence of contents of document when original is not available. Okay? At ano yung tatlong klaseng uh, secondary evidence? Ito sabi ko, RTC. Ano yung RTC? Yung R kasi recital of its contents in another authentic document. That's R. Okay? Uh, like certification. Yan. RTC. Uh, T. T is testimony of witness. Nakita na yung witness. Okay. Then C is copy of the original. Ito yung natawag na photocopy or Xerox or machine copy or certified copy. So ito yung mga secondary evidence. Okay, RTCN. Now, yung kanina, ano naman yung mga public document? Ano yung mga public document? Ito yung mga written officials, acts or records of official acts of the sovereign authority, official body. So ito yung mga uh, pinapalabas ni President Duterte, mga declaration, no? Uh, Proclamation. Ano pa ang public document? Document acknowledged before a notary public. Except last will and testaments. So, anong ibig sabihin yan? Ganyan to. Lahat ang document na private, pag in-acknowledge na yan ng notary public, then it becomes public document. Okay? Ganyan to. Deed of sale. Deed of sale is a private document. Kasi it's a transaction between the seller and the buyer. Okay. Transaction nila yan eh. That's, that's private. Now, the moment that document did of sale is notarized, acknowledged before a notary public, it becomes, it becomes a public document. No? 
But, but, last will and testament. If the last will, uh, yung last will and testament, okay, um, well, gumawa kayo ng last will and testament, and it is acknowledged by the Republic, last will and testament is, uh, ano yan, private pa rin yan, hindi yan public document. Okay? When public records keep in Philippines or private documents. So, all other writings are private. Pag hindi siya public, private siya. Yun lang yung rule. Okay, now, anong effect ng public document at saka ng private document? Well, public document does not uh, does not need authentication to be admissible and evidence. So, kasi nga, public document yan, hindi mo na kailangan i-authenticate, does not need authentication to be admissible. Pero yung private document, it needs authentication to be admissible. Kailangan ng authentication to be admissible. Yan yung private document. No? Pero may exception doon. Di ba? As general rule sa private document, general rule, a private document has to be authenticated. Yan yung rule eh. Okay? Private document has be, uh, should be authenticated. Yeah, rule yan, di ba? To be admissible. Pero my private document may be admitted with authentication. Anong tawad? Ano yun? When it is more than 30 years old. Okay? Ito yung tawad ng ancient document. Kung yung document na yun ay more than 30 years old, yung tawad na yun, ancient document. Anong effect, sir, pag ancient document? Private document siya, it does not need to be authenticated. Kasi yung ancient document. So, going back sa example ko, deed of sale. Pag yung deed of sale, private document yan. But if it is notarized, by notary pal, it becomes public document. No. Deed of sale, hindi notarized. Private yun. Pero pag yung deed of sale na yun, is, uh, it was executed 30 years ago, ang tawang natin yan, hindi na notarized ha, 30 years ago, pero hindi notarized. Private document pa rin yun, pero ancient document na yun, kasi 30 years old na, or more. Anong effect? Hindi na siya required na i-authenticate. No? It does not need to be authenticated. Yan yung rule. No? 24. Can a married man be charged with adultery? Pwede ba yung married man kakasawa mo ng adultery? Kasi, well, sa di ba married man ang kakasawa mo dyan ay um, concubinage? Okay? Concubinage. Diba? Kasi married man eh. So, can a married man be charged with adultery? Is it A? No. Because married man will be liable for concubinage. Okay, B, no. Because married man may be forgiven by the dependent spouse. C, yes, if there is conspiracy. D, yes, if he will engage in sexual intercourse with a married woman. Okay, ganito. Uh, kaya ba pwede, ka, oh, pwede ba kasuhan yung married man ng adultery? Of course, the answer is yes. If he engage in sexual intercourse with a married woman. Kung yung married man nagkipag-sex sa married woman at nahuli ng husband. Okay? Nahuli ng husband ng married woman. At gusto niyang uh, kasuhan yung dalawa. Yung married, yung asawa niya, married woman. At saka yung kabit, yung married man. Pwede yun. Pwede yun. Okay? But if you'll... Uh, Pagtara na itong sitwasyon. Okay? Uh, uh, husband and wife. Tapos, meron din ditong husband and wife. Okay? Pag nag-sex yung, yung dalawa ito, yung wife sa husband, at nahuli ng wife, at kakasuhan niya ng adultery, hindi pwede yun. Okay? Ang pwede yung kaso kung gubinage. Hindi pwede, hindi siya pwede. Pero kung ito nakahuli, Yes ba? Nahuli yung dalawa, nagsasex. Pwede siya magkakasun ng adultery. At kasuhan niya yung dalawa. Of course not. After the search, the officer should, anong gagawin ng officer after the search? A. Photograph the evidence. B. Mark the evidence. C. Collect the evidence. Or D. Inventory the evidence is under oath. So, well, pagkatapos ng search, anong dapat gawin ng officer? Magkandak ng inventory. Kasi kailangan ilagay niya kung ano yung nakuha niya. Ano yung nasis nila? Nakalagay sa mga, it must be under oath. No, it must be under oath. Okay, that, uh, that, will be, uh, that will be all for this video. Uh, thank you and see you in my next video.